Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Moment of Truth Community Connoisseurs Instagram Live podcast that we bring to you each and every Thursday night. I'm your host for tonight, Charlie G. Super, super excited to bring on our special guest tonight, Mrs. Mrs. Christian Marshall. She is a real real estate advisor, doing phenomenal work in the area of real estate here in the DMV area. And we're just super excited to have her on to tell us a little bit about her story, you know, her journey towards what she's doing now and all of the great works and all of the tips that she's given out on her platform about real estate and being prepared to buy a home, sell a home, whatever the case may be. We're excited to have Christian on today. If you all can do us a a favor and Invite a few people to this conversation. This is going to be a phenomenal conversation with Christian tonight. By hitting that arrow at the bottom right-hand side of your screen, we greatly appreciate it. I see you in the building, Christian Z. What up? Thank you for that tip. I'm not sure what that is. So there's some noise in the background. Let me know if you can hear me clearly now. Can you hear me clearly? Right, all right. Am I clear now? Okay, cool. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Again, if you have anybody that would be interested in hearing a phenomenal conversation with Christian here on the Moment of Truth tonight, please do us a favor and hit that arrow at the bottom right hand side of your screen and invite some of your network to this conversation. Christian um, is really doing her thing in the real estate industry. She has a lot of jewels, a lot of tips that she's going to share with us tonight. And we're super excited to have her on the moment of truth with us this evening. So without further ado, I'm going to read Christian's bio and then we're going to get right to this conversation tonight. So Christian is a D.C. native, graduate of North Carolina Agriculture and Technical State University and building a legacy as a realtor here in D.C. and Maryland. Christian has coined the expression wealth ownership where she lives to teach and remind us that life is more than than the pursuit of financial abundance. Pushing to embody wealth as being a full experience from our physical, mental and spiritual growth. She ties this into her real estate business by teaching her buyers and sellers the power they have before, during and after their transactions in so many ways. Christian is a wealth of knowledge and wisdom, and she's taken her problem-solving skills to new heights, adjust, adjusting to the drastic changes during today's market shift. Now, before we, that's, that's Christian's bio, but I just now seen that our brother, Teacher Ross, has just logged in. So what we're going to do before we bring in our special guest, Christian Marshall, today, we're going to bring my brother, Teacher Ross, on for five minutes of Joy Juice just to get this conversation kicked off. So without further ado, I'm sending my brother, Teacher Ross, that request, and we're going to have him kick us off with some Joy Juice. Teacher Ross, send me a, 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 um, a request, brother. So I'm not sure what's going on right now. I do know on my end, when I try to send a request to Teacher Ross, it's saying that you may have to update the latest version of Instagram. You know how technology is. They're always updating something. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. But without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring on... Got you, Teacher Ross. Got you. I'm going to bring on our special guest for tonight, Christian Marshall. Apologies, our brother Teacher Ross isn't available to come on tonight, but you know we're gonna get right to our special guest. You know, and you know, and again, if you have anybody that would like to 
you know, view this positive, inspiring conversation that we're getting ready to have with Christian tonight. Hit that arrow at the bottom right hand side of your screen and invite some people to this this phenomenal conversation that we're getting ready to tap into. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and send Christian that request set. And we're gonna get this party started. Hey, what's up, Christian? Hey, good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Excited for tonight's conversation. I appreciate the time and energy and selecting me to share a little bit of wisdom um, and speak from what comes from my heart tonight. Absolutely. We appreciate you. You could be doing a lot right now. You're doing real estate. You have your own company as well where you sell, um, you know, teas and things of that nature. You're an entrepreneur. You're out here doing your thing. You could be doing anything right now with your time tonight, Christian, but you decided to take you know, about an hour to spend with us on the moment of truth tonight. So before we start on the behalf of community connoisseurs, I want to just thank you for taking the time out to share your story, share your knowledge and your wisdom with us tonight on the moment of truth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. You're absolutely welcome. It's a pleasure. All right. All right. So to kick this conversation off, what we like to do typically on our shows, we like to start you know, there's people that's coming in from your personal network. I see Miss Linda Marshall is on, um, the family here to support you. And so many people are coming on from your network and also our network. But for those who are on right now, Christian, who may not be familiar who Christian Marshall is, right? You do not, don't know much about you. We like to start the conversations and kick them off like from the beginning. Let's talk about like your very beginning, your upbringing coming up as a DC native. Um, I have to say, just to start off with, that I'm blessed. Um, and I think the main thing and a huge part of what you're creating and you and your team have created with the Community con Connoisseurs is that community is everything. Um, and I have to give it up to my community. And <clears throat> the people who have impacted my life from the beginning to now, um, it it's so crazy to reflect back on just the different people who have came into my life and blessed me in those different stages to help me to be the person that I am today and growing into, um, it's just amazing. But to get started, uh, born and raised in DC, and I was blessed to have both my father and my mother in the house, both hard workers, um, always had a job, but also had a side hustle as well. Um, very big on giving. Um, my dad uh, goes above and beyond to be a part of the community and help out a neighbor. My mom, a part of um, the growth of, of everything that you all have in regards to donations and everything. Um, so it's just a huge part of just being blessed to say that I have both my parents who worked really hard to educate me and my sister uh, and my brother. And one of the main things that I do remember that even being born and raised in D.C., we had the blessings to travel to different states. I didn't get my passport until I was a, an adult, and it really didn't matter because my parents still got us out of D.C. to be able to see and to open our minds and our ideas to life being bigger than uh, the four corners of D.C. that we live in. And... Uh, we bounced. I bounced around a little bit in D.C., started in Northwest, up Upshur Street, moved to Kennedy Street. Uh, so I've been to quite a number of schools in D.C., I think maybe about seven. <laughs> so, and the reason why I bring that up is because a huge part of my ability to adapt has been the fact that I've seen different, different spaces of life in D.C. And mm -hmm. And I truly am just, again, just blessed, just reflecting on the different things that I've been able to um, accomplish because of my parents. Um, I've had <clears throat> three of my siblings are much older than me, so they didn't necessarily grow up in the house with me, mm -hmm. uh, which gave me the ability to see success before I was even a teenager and to see them go off to college, get you know degrees, go off to the army. So I had again, that amazing community around me through every stage of my life, and it adapted. Um, from elementary school, went to Jefferson. From Jefferson, I went to Banneker for a few years and then graduated from McKinley. That's the story. Uh, but... <laughs> that was the truth. Uh-huh. I honestly... 
academically Banneker is tough and I wasn't I um I guess I hit a point in my academic career was I, I wasn't necessarily motivated by the structure of education the formal idea of education so having to learn about past presidents in depth like they wanted to at Banneker it just wasn't me um so I ended up which was ended up being a blessing because I ended up transferring to McKinley where I specialize in technology and that's where I ended up going to North Carolina A&T because they're a technology school um I got my degree in computer science and okay. I ended up I didn't go into computer science after school but the major thing that I took away from A&T was my problem solving skills like literally that's all computer science is is figuring out that like, you know having a problem and figuring it out and that's one of the things that my sister also kind of pushed me is just like, Kristen, how do you figure it out? How do you figure it out? And that's a huge part of where I am now. So, so yeah, I'm going <laughs> to go on a little bit because we're going to tap back into that college experience and also a little bit with your high school experience as well. But I do want to go back to like your, your household, right? You said that you were raised, you know, in a family where you had your mom and your dad. You both were hard workers and both had side hustles. So obviously they had a huge impact on, you know, your uh, your vision of, you know, just sustaining yourself, being able to go out and get what you need to sustain yourself and your family. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, because it's always interesting, um, it's about coming up with both of your 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 um parents, right? All, you know, sometimes we hear different um, scenarios where it's a single mom or maybe someone was raised by their grandparents, their grandma, what, um, with the, with the, whatever the case may be. But as a, a black woman coming up with your with your father and your mom in the house, tell us a little bit of how that helped shape and mold your perspective of family and just life in general coming up with both of your parents in the household. And nonetheless, you know, I want to emphasize like that male figure, no, no pun intended, you know, shout out to the strong moms. We love you, right? Well, you know, coming up with a uh, with that male figure as a young black lady in your household, what did that do for you? You know, how important do you feel that is in a, in a um, African American community to make sure that even if you're not even in the same household, but just having that supportive male figure um, in your in your as you are growing up as a young lady, how did that impact you? The main thing that I believe that I was able to gain was wisdom, you know, having the two different perspectives um, and options. So for me, like just understanding the woman that I am today, I see traits from my mother and I also see traits from my father. And mm -hmm. so I believe the great greatest thing that I had having both of them is options. I had the option to choose certain personality traits or certain ideas and certain principles because you know no individual no no couple has everything the exact same mm -hmm. so i got to choose um certain aspects that i admired about each parent to mm -hmm. be able to adopt and take into my own personal life and i think that that's the true blessing um and then also, you know, they, they was able to work as a team. Sometimes my mom would be the disciplinary and sometimes my dad knew it was his turn to be the disciplinary um, so that my love for them was equal, you know, um, versus having a love-hate relationship. It was, I couldn't hate them too much because there was always so much love as well, right. in, including um, that structure. So I think that's the main thing is, really having the perspective of two individuals who are, you know, bringing me up into a world that is difficult. Mm, definitely. Definitely. And it also creates, I would say, is it safe to say that balance as well? You got that male, you have that female perspective. Yeah, I, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's, it is that like we are, every person has both that feminine and that masculine energy in us. And, mm -hmm. They like having both parents, I got to see what masculinity looks like, and I also got to see what femininity looks like. Um, and I, <clears throat> yeah, like I don't even know how to say you say the best. <laughs> how did you, how did you know. <laughs> say that's so profound? I'm interested to know how do you how did you know that? Because what you did, you just dropped a jewel mm -hmm. with someone who you know doesn't know that you know that really is 
like some that's powerful what you said everyone has that masculine and that feminine how were you able to understand that was that through um through self study was that through something that they explained to you or is that just something you observed it's a mixture of both um i think i <clears throat> subconsciously observed it growing up mm -hmm. but as an adult and in my space where i I'm all about personal development. I don't believe there's any time or space in which we don't um, need to be growing and doing that self-reflection. Um, so I'm always listening to uh, YouTube videos or audio books or podcasts. I'm always picking up a book. Um, and so I feel like part of it was just naturally picking up on what it looks like to be a man from my dad and what it looks like to be a woman from my mom. And then also, you know, I had my sisters and I had a brother. So mm -hmm. that perspective, again, and then sisters are older than me. So they were married, too. So I got to see that dynamic, mm -hmm. too. Um, so just having those multiple households to kind of look after and uh, teach me what it was like to be a woman and, and what it's also like to get out there and get, get what needs to be done um, mm -hmm. was a blessing. And then... It was something else that came to mind. And then also, okay, and then the podcast that I listened to kind of helped me to put it into words, in a sense. Right. So you, you said you had on self-development. Can you, like, share with um, the viewers right now maybe some books that helped you? Um, we're going to tap into the real estate because I know you probably read some real estate books. But let's, let's keep it focused right now at this moment on some self, just some self-development books that you would recommend just for someone listening that may be interested in reading and finding some good books that can help them uh, grow? Uh, so I think, so the two that came to mind, because I'm um, in the midst, like I have one that's in my real estate office and I have one that's home that I kind of go to and pick up and I actually have one at my partner's house. Uh, so it's like three books that I'm kind of simultaneously reading. <laughs> um, the first one is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, what's the name of the book? How to Break the Habit of Being Yourself. And mm -hmm. That one is dives deeply into us having the option on how we show up each day, no matter what our history is or no matter where we came from, you know, being able to choose from this moment forward how we show up. So he, he dives a lot into how our brain works. Mm -hmm. The second one that's in my real estate office is Gary Zukov. It's called The Heart of the Soul. Mm -hmm. And so that one talks more about our, he kind of, he used different words, but it's about the chakra system and how our chakra system connects to, if you don't know about chakras, they're just energy centers that connect to different parts of your body, but also taps into different, um, the meanings of life in a sense. And so it's a lot into what it really means to be a being on this world um, and how we have to acknowledge our inner selves in order to show up better in real life. Um, and then the one I have at home that I just refound and I'm reading it again is <clears throat> The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity. Mm. Um, I can't tell you the name of the author, but if you look up The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, she's going to pop up. It's a woman. Um, and this one is all about how prosperity and wealth is a whole experience. It's not just about the dollar, which is the wealth ownership, the idea of wealth ownership. Um, so it's not just about the dollar bill. It's about the, the whole person of you. Are you kind? Are you um, present in moments? Are you receiving blessings from others? Are you giving blessings? Like, it just talks about the whole totality of what wealth looks like in, in an abundance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm, you know, I'm really high on self-development myself. In fact, I mean, I've talked about this in prior podcasts is quite frankly, I'm self-taught, you know, don't have any degrees, anything like that. And I'm doing fairly well for myself through self-development. So I'm like a huge, huge advocate of self-development and just, you know, acquiring knowledge, learning about self. Um, you know, I like what you were just talking about in regards to like, starting with the internal, I think that's very important. A lot of times we we try to go out and, and obtain different things um, and, and we try to look a certain way and, and uh, wear this somewhat like a mask externally, you know what I mean, and, and think that we're going to achieve happiness, achieve success, whatever that looks like for you, but haven't done any work inside, where it comes to like your physical health, your spiritual 
help your uh, what you consume in your body you know how you eat your diet all types of stuff we we kind of neglect that you know what i mean naturally so it's super super important to start with them you know and then from um based on what you were saying about those some of the books that you just mentioned starting with them subsequently manifest some of the things that we want to acquire which would be like those tangible things that we can see and touch and feel and get like money you know but the real money is being healthy internally so that when you show up in those spaces that would that lifestyle that you want to manifest mm -hmm. is is who you are not the, the the face that you're putting on in the world so thank you for sharing that and um i love the fact that you are huge on self-development because i'm sure that you know through those readings and taking time out um taking time out to educate yourself on on a higher level is really impacting your success in the industries that you are in as well so keep on doing it keep on doing it because that's huge i was saying same to you one of the things that i just just felt uh while you were speaking is that community connoisseurs like y'all aren't a small entity like y'all are making a huge impact um and i don't know if y'all get reminded of this often but literally like the team that y'all have the ideas that y'all are putting out in front of people the businesses that are y'all are building legitly in the right way through the education and the the powerful sources that y'all have y'all are a wealth of knowledge and and resources and i really hope and pray that y'all continue to stay together through love <laughs> and grace and just really continue to make an impact dc is just y'all starting grounds yeah. i can y'all are going to continue to grow in so many capacities and create what literally can be a franchise of a nonprofit type style business so just kudos to y'all and everything that y'all have done so far Thank you. Thank you so much. That's very well received. Thank you. And definitely appreciate it on the behalf of uh, community connoisseurs and all of the partners, everyone that's on the board. I just want to say thank you for that. It means a lot. Really, it does. Um, so I want to go back to like your childhood, right? Like, so we talked a little bit about the early years. Anything else you got for us for like those early years? Like who are, like, I know you said, I mean, I, we know Miss Linda. I, I, I um, haven't met your dad. I don't believe I have, but I've had the pleasure to meet your mom. She's a phenomenal individual. Like you said, she, her heart is community. She takes time out of her schedule to make sure that she shows up, donates, you know, provides resources for families that are in certain circumstances, um, in living conditions every year, you know, so she's really, you know, a testament of a community, you know, pioneer. So shout out to your mom, but like that hustle that you got, right? You know, I know you said that both your parents work and they had side hustles. Who would you say, one, are you a mama's girl or a daddy's girl? And two, who would you say, like, really inspired? I know you said your sisters, but when it, came, when it comes to your parents, who do you feel like gave you that battery in your back that you needed to go out there and have that hustler's mentality that you had? <laughs> um, it, it, for sure, in regards to, I feel like I'm a daddy's girl because I just have a soul spot for my dad. Um my mom like already hands down she's a beast uh so when it comes to being a business owner and entrepreneur she definitely takes the crown on creating that and showing me the way of, of bringing that about so she definitely takes the crown when it comes to being the business owner that i am got you got you okay miss linda <laughs> <laughs> yeah she she's creating a legacy herself she don't even know it like she don't, she don't even know the impact that she makes in people's lives um, on a daily basis. Like um, <clears throat> from and just speaking on the childhood, like a huge part of my upbringing, she's been a social worker. So yeah. I've seen her dedicate her life to so many women. She kind of focused on women, um, especially women with children. Mm -hmm. And so um there's just a soft spot when it comes to me when it comes uh when it comes to black women and the service that i do for real estate like a uh, part of getting into real estate was so that i can teach families um the power of what we have in our own backyard especially as dc natives mm -hmm. so but mm -hmm. yeah now she's the reason why i'm a business owner and i know <laughs> and even in your dad your family in general but i know as your parents they are super super happy of you know just this i mean i can imagine as a parent to see their children grow up and really be successful and motivated to do something with this their, themselves and be just 
purposeful in their life and really pour into others, I can imagine that you're making them very, very proud. So I want to commend them for, you know, pouring into that, pouring into you the way that they did, because obviously it worked all the time, effort and support they gave to you. But also, you know, I want to commend you for being, you know, that individual who took that knowledge that they poured into you, took those morals, those values into your adult life and really is really are doing great things with it because you know you, your parents are here and they and i'm sure that every day they are so grateful and they're very proud you know and that gives them life more life yeah i hope so i hope so <laughs> absolutely so shout out to all y'all <laughs> Thank you. so um let's talk about you know high school how was christian in high school i know you said you bounced around and <laughs> so that is in itself is an experience and worthy of talking about because you know your high school years are critical years of your life you starting to smell yourself a little bit you starting to get older you know, <laughs> like all right you, sometimes we think we got it all under control we know got all the answers and we don't really know nothing <laughs> you know so how was that for you moving to like seven schools let's talk about your high school years um it was i mean Overall, I learned from everything. Uh, during those times, though, um, I was figuring myself out. I was exploring. I was taking risks. Um, I was, I guess, uh, beyond my time. Uh, my friends and I definitely were partying the, or living the college-style lifestyle in high school. So I got into trouble, but not not too much because I do know that my parents was praying over me. Like I, for whatever reason, I was always not in the environments that um, ended up being unsafe environments. Like I just always missed the party that ended up um, being chaotic, or you know, like it was just always blessed to miss danger. Um, and I do feel like that's because my parents was always praying over me. Um, you're sending love and showing love to me. So I didn't stray too far, but I definitely tried things. Um, nothing too extreme. Uh, I do know, I, I think I started to understand that I wanted, a, I wanted abundance in high school. Um, I think I started to figure out that normalcy wasn't my thing. Um, I never was like, always say like I wasn't in a, in a sense in the in crowd, but my best friends were always popular. Um, mm -hmm. I literally, I moved at my own pace. Like I would go to lunch by myself and people would typically gravitate to me. And like, it was just like, I just didn't, I never was with a click. So I just always saw myself as that, as an individual. Um, and I think that started to also show me different perspectives of life through having that, you know, that, <clears throat> that back seat while everyone else was making their different moves, if that makes sense. Um, so I do remember that about myself is I never necessarily needed to be in the in crowd, but I also wasn't an outcast, you know? Um, yeah, high school was interesting. Um, oh, it's, it's sort of, it sort of seems like you knew who you were at a very young age. And sometimes when you're in that high school age, you know, you're still trying to figure yourself out, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely still was trying to figure myself out, but I I never folded under stupid peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, like I remember, like black, uh, black and miles was a thing. It just like was, like I was just like, nah, I'm good. And then I remember my friends try cigarettes, and now like you know, like I just knew not to fall under stupid peer pressure. You know, like I live my life, but it just being stupid was just not an option right right and how do you so because it's i know some you've watched this podcast right how were you able to like, not make the what helped you navigate in, in in the way you did as a it was it like your upbringing in your household was it like you seeing others in your environment crash from doing different making crazy decisions how were you able to keep yourself some you know for the most part on a straight and narrow i'm a mom uh <laughs> my father uh they were probably more so them but um i do know my parents are older again um so you know like i was listening to oldies as a young kid so i had a old soul in the sense they would always tell me um 
that was a factor. I also was able to see my sisters um, through their high school phase because, again, they were older than me. Uh, so I kind of I had people around me who were much older than me that I could see what certain outcomes will lead you to. So I think, you know, being able to have, again, community. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Tell you what is right and what is wrong. And then also, you know, still like navigating it myself. But uh, for the most part, I had a good amount of people around me uh, with that's, that were giving me advice, that were leading in me, me in the right direction. Um, and that was also speaking life into me as well. I did definitely... Um, Again, uh, my parents kept us in church. Um, that also was a great thing uh, as you get to see. like, I, And I really feel like the pastor that we had, like I had, like he was my pastor since birth. Like he was the one that Christianed me and everything. And so um, having the consistency of him, and he was a really good man outside of church um, and being able to see that also kept me um on a straight there and they always praise me so you can't do too much bad because the church won't know so <laughs> um so that was also helpful so that community which is hugely important um for you is having that village and that strong support system you know so that's 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 amazing um christian so i wanted to um i wanted to talk about after high school so you 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 went through high school, you moved around a lot, but you kept yourself grounded. You said you all you found out in high school that you uh, wanted abundance in your life, right? Which is which is a great, you know, thing to recognize while you're in high school. Because I tell you, when I was in high school, I really wasn't thinking about that at all. Like my whole mind frame was totally different. But you, on the other hand, already was thinking about abundance, so you were ahead of the game. And I do think that, like you say, having older parents kind of gives you like those traditional, like, you know, like it grounds you, you know, like you said, you were listening to oldies and probably the things that you saw were more like, you know, it was just more grounded, you know what I mean? And 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 it helped you, you know, kind of view the world differently than maybe some peers that had young parents that maybe still getting their lives together or doing whatever they um, living their best lives for the most part, although your parents were living their best lives, they just have more maturity. So that kind of, you know, that kind of, you know, spills over to um, your persona as well. And, and even now, like me knowing you and the way you communicate, um, you know, in person, like the way you move and the way just how you present yourself, I can tell that that foundation was really strong and you were raised well. Um, but going into college, so you went to North Carolina um, Agriculture and Technical, and I mean, and Technical State University, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit how you um, decided to go to that school. What was your majors? What did you study? You know, and just tell us a little bit about your college experience in, gen in general. Um, so again, I'm gonna give it to my parents because in high school, even like even just listening to you. Uh, to me that I was in after pro after school program so I was a cheerleader since like the fifth or sixth grade maybe even younger so I always had things that kind of keep me out of trouble um and one of those things in high school was upward bound was it high school or junior high school it might have been like junior high school into high school but upward bounds was a program um that I was in and so they were big on making sure that children or I guess I was a child um accumulate from high school into college and so we went on a lot of school tours um, to different universities, and uh, a and was one of them. So North Carolina a and was one of them. And it was just something about that campus that was, like, <clears throat> it had, like, just, it's so much, like, it literally birthed in 1891, but it was so, like, fresh. Like, it just was a fresh, a breath of fresh air. Um, I'm big on nature. I didn't know. <laughs> know that back then but I, I felt it when I got there and it was like so many amazing beautiful big trees um the campus is so like open so it's like so much sunlight and just it just felt fresh it felt good when I was there mm -hmm. um, and of course they had little parties and stuff that's uh, you right yes the HBCU oh. yeah and so um it just felt good when I was there. Uh, so when I, like, after all of the college tours that we went on, it came down to North Carolina A&T or Michigan State University. 
I ended up choosing North Carolina A&T because Michigan won. It was so far. My parents was like, you're not going to come home that much. I'm like, mm. And it was cold. So I was like, mm. <laughs> so, um, and then I had two cousins who actually graduated from McKinley, too, that were at uh, A&T. So it felt easy to be able to transition into college life, mm -hmm. have family, and already knowing that A&T was a good school. Um, and one of the other things that <clears throat> I just thought about, too, was that I was very – focused on innovation and understood that because of McKin because of going to McKinley and seeing technology as a thing um and that's part of why I chose to study computer science is because my thought was I will always have a job at minimum like bare minimum I will always have money I will always have a job mm -hmm. and um and I just knew technology was a future at that point and then um when I was there that's when I discovered like I don't want a job. <laughs> like a job isn't isn't enough. Um, so what can I do to take this this degree and and make it work for who I really am? Mm -hmm. And what was the degree? Computer science. Computer science. So let's talk about what you did after college once you graduated. Uh, so get y'all honesty moment <laughs> again. School, <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't just, it just wasn't me um, in regards to getting that, that formal education. I'm a life learner. I'm going, I pick up books on my own. Mm -hmm. I take courses on Udemy all the time to get new certificates. So education is everything to me, but formal education just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So to say that the crazy thing is I had an up and down journey when it came to a and I ended up graduating, I think, cum laude. But it wasn't due because it was a pretty slate. I literally almost flunked out my first semester. Mm -hmm. I had the my first, first my freshman year I almost flunked out of school. So All I went right. going to um I know the, the reason I wasn't disciplined. So I ended up going to summer school. Ended up getting straight A's in summer school, which helped me get uh, my grades up. I did good the next few um, semesters, and for whatever reason, my senior project when it came to that last year, we just didn't complete the project to the professor's standard so mm. up, uh, walking the stage for graduation but I didn't get my degree so I had to go to school <laughs> after I graduated um to officially get my degree so it was a blessing that I actually got the degree after having to go through that journey um I had already moved back to D.C. at that point. Um, and I just got the letter in the mail like, hey, we need you to redo this project. I'm like, wow. <laughs> it wasn't because it was an easy journey. Um, it definitely had its ups and downs. But right. um, my uncle had came through freshman year to help me finance my, my uh, summer school program. So that was a blessing because without him, my family, we just couldn't afford the, the class because we had to pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Um and you know like again it's just that community like mm -hmm. uh, my sister one of my older sisters no actually my oldest one of my older sister's husband was just like we don't like we don't we don't not finish you know like we're not a, a non-finisher like we start things we finish them and mm -hmm. so what's my what's the point of me going back to school when i could just be an entrepreneur he was like listen if you don't finish this now, you're not going to finish nothing later. So, <laughs> again, all of these older, wiser people around me really helped me to keep it on the straight and narrow. So, <laughs> so I love the fact that you expressed the gratitude for your elders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that they they are who mm -hmm. I am, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. But they are who I am, you know? Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So, after college, you graduate, you get your degree. What happens next? I settled for a government job. Okay. Um, but I still have my... So I started a, a network marketing business in um, at a and t And that, that was the reason why I got into personal development. That was the reason why Kristen became outgoing. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yep. So I was this... I was a kid in school when it came to college who was uh, doing business meetings while my friends was planning on going out partying. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of me having the partying um, in my high school uh, time frame is that I didn't need to party when I got to college. I think I did the first year. And again, my grades reflected it. 
Mm. After that, it's just like, this is getting old, you know, going on a party scene, it was getting old. So, um, so my energy was on school and on building the business. Mm -hmm. So, um, I continued to do my network marketing business while I was building my, or excuse me, while I was uh, accumulating through the government. The life lesson that I learned is that I thought uh, I had to have two different identities mm -hmm. from lawyer mindsets and my entrepreneur mindset. So my first year as an employer, employee was tough because I would show up to work and be an amazing employee because, again, I had that mindset to go above and beyond. That mm -hmm. came from my system, just like, you know, that figure it out, mm -hmm. um, just settle for less. So I was able to easily accumulate through um, the government mm -hmm. there, but I felt like I couldn't let them know that I was also an entrepreneur. And it wasn't until like my first, my after my first year, I was just like, F it. Yeah. I, I'm Kristen. I'm tired of juggling hats. Yeah. That's to me and you either accept it or don't. So I ended up um, leaving that job anyway, because they were holding me back. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, like It was just like a lot of people that didn't like that I was a, I was going above and beyond. Like I had a desk job. I literally was the person at the front desk to say, hey, welcome to the building. Right, right. That was my job. That was it for people signed in. I started a program while I was there to help people build their resumes. I was outside sweeping the um, playground if the janitor was late and we had programs coming in. So, so you know, like I'm, I just naturally became that above and beyond person when it comes to work, when it comes to my personal life, when it comes to my love life, when it comes to family, like I'm just going to go above and beyond naturally. Mm -hmm. So, and they wasn't appreciative of that. So I got a, a promotion and went to a different um, agency. They appreciated me for a while. And then we got a new manager and she didn't mm -hmm. appreciate it as much. So that's when I left and, um, I left the government in 2019. Uh, my goal was to continue to pursue because I had my I got my real estate license in at the beginning of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, I left the government to do my real estate full time and my network marketing full time. But okay. you know, I became ungrounded because of the environment that I created at the workplace. I feel like um, I used to blame the manager for creating a toxic environment, but I started to take that as my responsibility of I created an environment that I wanted to escape from because I knew I didn't want that job anymore. Right. It became harder and harder for me to go to work mm -hmm. on inside manifestations in a sense. Um, so it worked out. So <laughs> I put my two weeks in um, and uh, I took a mental health break after, mm -hmm. before I started to, before I discovered that I wanted to launch Wealth Tea as a business um, and once that became a little more solid, I was able to get back into real estate. And um, I've been full time in real estate since last year. And it's been picking up very nicely. Congratulations on that. But before we, we definitely going to tap back into tap into the real estate. Right. But I definitely have to uh, talk about wealth tea uh, because I've personally tasted the wealth tea. And it's very good, very, you know, refreshing, also relaxing. It has an aura um, with it. Right. You know, good energy when you're drinking that tea. Your presentation, you work with us on different pop-up events and things like that. Tell us a little bit about, you know, about Wealth Tea, how it started. Because like you said, you started to, you know, have these manifested ma manifestations in your head. But you, you know, brought them into fruition because you became more intentional in doing it rather than working. And you said um, that you, you started the Wealth Tea. Tell us. Like, what is Wealth C? What is like the foundation of that business? How did you um, come up? Why T? You know, like, just tell us a little bit about how um, Wealth T came into fruition. Um, so, I, so, multiple ways. One way that comes to mind first is I started, I got uh, introduced to herbal tea from one of my exes. Um, he used to always make herbal tea, like the gingers and all that stuff um, for us. So that's how I kind of got into drinking herbal tea. And so that was a start. And then I also started because, again, with network marketing, you have to be in front of people. You have to be out the house in order for you to meet new people to build your business. So instead of going to Starbucks, which my normal habit was to go to Starbucks, I ended up um, 
discovering Calabash and I would go there after work to meet new people and to drink tea. So I also started to get more familiar with herbal teas and the energy and what herbal teas can do from there. And so when I ended up leaving the job and firing my boss in 2019, again, I was so emotionally, mentally, and spiritually drained that I just shut everything out. Like I didn't pursue and I didn't go forward with real estate. I didn't go and go massively into my network marketing business as my plan was because I just didn't want to talk to nobody. Like I didn't, like I was done with people for a bit and that made me spend more time with myself. Mm -hmm. um, so in my moments of quietness and my solitude, I started to get back into the natural rhythm of who Kristen really is and what Kristen really wants. Mm -hmm. and so, and just to fast forward for today, I was listening to something this morning and he was just like, take a second and ask yourself the things that you say that you want in life. If nobody else saw you achieve it or get it or, or, or buy it, would it still matter to you? Mm. So it was questions like those that I was asking myself in 2019 to help me rediscover what I really wanted to do. Like if money wasn't a factor, if, I didn't have to worry about this, this, and this. What would Kristen really want? You know, what would what, what Kristen's life really look like? Mm -hmm. um, a, a thought, a part of one thought that did come to mind is that I'm naturally a teacher. Mm. And I remember in elementary school, you know, they always ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I feel it is because teachers don't make money. Right. But... <laughs> As an adult, I now see there's multiple multiple ways of you being a teacher. It doesn't just have to be in a school. So it came full circle where my sister, uh, Lieta, and I decided to launch a YouTube channel to talk about our story, to teach people about um, the personal things that we were learning through our personal development journey and, and business-wise. Um, and so we wanted to do tea talk. Mm -hmm. and so Oh, my God. I was like, well, uh, so go back just a little second. Um, early in 2019, I had started the idea because I wanted to track my happiness. I wanted to track my uh, my growth and my success. So mm -hmm. I created this wheel called Wealth Ownership. And that's where Wealth Ownership started. It's an acronym for Wisdom, Ethereal, and Atomic Location Township Part Ownership. Mm -hmm. Follow me if y'all want to learn more because we don't got that much time today. But that those acronyms stands for seven different areas of life that all matter in our pursuit for wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, I understood a part of my mission in life is to make sure that somehow, some way I'm in an ownership position for everything that I do. Mm. That's something that I can do overnight, but I understood that it starts with the thought. Mm. So in the starting the YouTube channel, um, I thought originally was like, let's find a sponsor that will sponsor us to have tea talks. And so something in me was just like, I don't feel like writing to someone else asking them for the sponsorship. And that's kind of how I felt when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to get another job or to quit. I didn't, I just could push myself to fill out an application, you know? So um, something strong in me was just like, nah, you can do this yourself. <laughs> and so the company that I was originally thinking about asking to sponsor us, they didn't have the type of teas that I wanted anyway. I wanted, I literally wanted teas that tapped into every chakra mm -hmm. and every energy center that we have, again, to remind us that our time and our space here is a physical, mental, and spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. So that's where uh, the, the, Part of me was just like, I can launch my own tea company. You know, again, that's that ownership piece of no one else can do it like me. No one else would teach like me. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Um, so that that ended up um, launching that in fall of 2020. That's wonderful. And <clears throat> how can people find your teas if they wanted to order some tea? It's really good. You know, I've had it before personally, and it makes you feel good. It's, it's refreshing. It's not too much sugar it's not no sugary tea that isn't good for you it's very healthy refreshing and it does something to your soul i've had it myself i would definitely highly recommend that everyone you know support uh, our sister christian and her tea company if they wanted to order some tea how could they do that 
So the easiest way is wealth-t.com. Um, and then they're also located at Selena, the hotel on New York Avenue. Um, so if you want something quick and you don't want to ship to you, you can go to Selena, the hotel. And it, I think it's 441 um, New York Avenue Northeast in Washington, D.C. And then um, you can shop online as well, wealth dash t dot com so w e is that right let me see um i'm gonna type it in i don't okay. know yeah make sure y'all tap in with christian and her tea is really good and as you see, it has a lot of positive energy um that goes into it from the creator so definitely definitely support her tea company and you know, we got to circulate that dollar in our community and she's doing something positive, holistic um, and healing through tea. So make sure that y'all support wealth-t.com and su 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 support the sister. Definitely going to grab some tea from you as well, Christian. Thank you. Thank um, so, so you got your tea company going and you started doing your, you, you got your real estate license and you started doing real estate. Let's just, go ahead and dive into the real estate conversation like what made you like say this is it i know you say you have um some family that's in real estate as well but like for you to just really say this is something that i want to you know do in my life as and to 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 support myself to support my family i want to do real estate tell us about what made you make that decision and about you know what you do, you like this? Tell us the you know the basics of real estate if you can share some some tips. If there's people on right now that want to get into the industry, or may already be in the industry, some tips that you can share with us, and just how that's been just the real estate world for you in general. Okay, so the way that I got started, um, of course, is always things that you don't know um, or seeds that's planted that you don't even know were planted before. Uh, the actual flower grew. So uh, one of the things was, oh, what can I say? So I think one of the main things was when I came back home after graduating from North Carolina a and I saw how different D.C. was. And mm -hmm. I saw how a lot of the communities were changing. Um, and it wasn't for us. Mm -hmm. uh that broke my heart you know mm -hmm. <laughs> um so that was a part of it and when i saw that i was in barnes and again with network marketing you got to be in front of people so i would go another place that i would go to if i didn't go to starbucks was barnes and noble mm -hmm. and i would read books in public instead of um that was one of my mentors says like to work out go work out at a gym you can't meet nobody if you're working out at home mm -hmm books don't read books at home go to a bookstore so i used to also go to barnes and noble and so um i was in there and i picked up a book um <clears throat> don't judge me <laughs> the book it's on, on the moment of truth the book was uh written about donald trump so oh, was it the art of the deal the art of the deal i, re I read the art of the deal too i have it I <laughs> me that was a good book that i read a very good book so outside of y'all personal opinions the book opened my eyes to real estate it opened my eyes to see wow. how i was able to go and build so many amazing luxury style buildings um and just really his real estate portfolio is large mm -hmm. and so and it talks about you know the, the in-depth about how uh to communicate with people to get your visions through so it was just so many layers to that book that opened my eyes to real estate and i didn't necessarily um immediately go into it but that book never left my mind mm -hmm. uh, and the guy that introduced me to herbal teas also pushed me to get my real estate license <laughs> so um so there's always a lesson in all the relationships that you have mm -hmm. uh, ended up pushing me to get my real estate license again um i got started but i really didn't have the brokerage that i chose just really wasn't a place and an environment that i really wanted to be so i really didn't go hard into real estate until I felt comfortable with the lady that I work with now at um, TPHG because it's an environment that I want to be in. And they're like, literally, I got your back. So 
um yeah those were like the many layers and then also understanding that uh that I had to I felt like I had to learn real estate from the inside in order for me to make an impact on how the future of DC will be moving Mm -hmm. so that was another huge thing of like you know of not letting continuously these higher powers change the face of dc without at least trying to make a staple and to make a make an impact so that we are educated and bringing that wealth and that knowledge back to our community so that we know how to build and buy houses with generations in mind Absolutely. part of our motto at tphg is equity mm-hmm. and wealth Mm -hmm. and generational wealth like those are the three things that we say a lot equity wealth and generational wealth Mm -hmm. because yes you can buy your first home but like that idea of that dream home is dying for good reasons Mm -hmm. we emotionally attached to one property for the rest of our lives Mm -hmm. there's so many ways for us to be able to purchase a home with the idea of all right this is my starter to Mm -hmm. my portfolio Mm -hmm. um once i stay here for maybe two to three years let me put a little bit of equity into the house because you're not only choosing a house that feels good to you to live in but you're also choosing to put it into an environment or buy a house in a space that makes sense because the equity is going to grow Mm -hmm. if you are buying in a space where the equity is going to grow slowly have an understanding that you can then rent that rent that house out until the equity gets you where you want to go mm-hmm. and just understanding like once you you know take advantage of buying up your first house the next thing is to turn that house again into a rental or sell it so that you can pull the equity out and purchase your next project and you know like you can keep doing that and you can purchase multiple homes you can purchase um multi-family homes you can get into a commercial real estate but the next level to that, once you purchase, is understanding trust, D, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and everything else that, and and even insurance, like just three tidbits in regards to saying that you you buy a tr- excuse me, you pay a lawyer to build you a trust to make sure that if you pass away, that you already have it in writing or a will that states this is what's going to happen to the property when i pass away this is who it goes so it could be a charity if you don't have family um Mm -hmm. or it could be a child it could be a parent whomever but just understand Mm -hmm. when you pass away then if you don't have something in writing the state is going to be have their whole hands in what happens to your property if you don't plan that in advance and anything happens to us any day want to make sure that that's a part of your real estate process um the second thing in regards to buying multiple family homes is that you always have the ability to rent out one of the units if you need to, even if it's um, <clears throat> if you buy a house and you have the bottom level where you can have a renter um, just in case time get hard, you need some extra equity or assume you need some extra funds, whatever that looks like. I'm having that as an option. And then the generational part of it is you can set again. I'm um, sorry. It was life insurance. The life insurance, you can not necessarily life insurance, but insurance policy. Mm-hmm policy based on how much the house is worth mm-hmm. and, and they said you're you pass before you you expect to whomever is the inheritor of that house or of that piece of real estate mm-hmm. that insurance will cover the mortgage mm-hmm. so they don't take on a debt and mm-hmm. lose it anyway right um, part is you can also set up levels to trust um to say that you know like if like if this person in a sense doesn't want to to take it on or or make sure that this person is sell it if they don't want it it goes to this person until the next generation comes about yada yada like there's just love to how you can really use it and then when there's equity in the home again you can pull it out to reinvest and get another property or to invest it into a business like there's leverage instead of renting and you never see that money again the idea of what you're paying towards the mortgage is like it's like your pot of gold (laughs) it's like the bank like in a sense holding your money you Mm -hmm. know your money for you until you're ready to use it and reinvest it into something that can again grow even more Mm -hmm. uh, abundance for you so yeah that's definitely i see jackie just commented said great tips very informative yes indeed that is 
another level of conversation that I feel that is sometimes lacking in our community, in the African American community, just that general gener, generational wealth um, concept and having the policies in place so that if you pass away, you won't be leaving your family in debt, you know, and, and just, you know, and having trust and wills. I think I, I want to thank you for sharing that information because that's something that can be uh, quite distinct in our, in our community and in our households when it comes to kind of, you know, learning how to one, create wealth, but also sustain it and also to have it, you know, where it's set up that your family could, you know, perhaps benefit from, you know, the things that you put in place while you were here and that you pass away. That's something that we not we don't talk about those those type of things, trust wills, insurance that you talked about, life insurance. So that is I wanna just thank you again for, you know, sharing that information because it's something that we need to talk about more. It's something that we need to hear more inside of our household and educate, you know, our youth at a very young age about, right? Um, I know me personally, I grew up in in in, in a community where a, a majority of my peers they say rent, 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 rent. That's why I got to pay my rent. However, I grew up in a household for for the um, majority of my youth in a household where I didn't hear rent because my family owned. We lived in an area that was, you know, surrounded by, you know, the things that happen in impoverished neighborhoods. But my family was smart enough to invest in that space, which mm -hmm. been equity, you know, mm -hmm. in property that still exists, you know, and... I heard mortgage when I was growing up, you know? So it's just a different thinking pattern when it comes to mortgage, I mean, rent versus mortgage. And when it comes to, like you said, that generational piece as well, not only thinking, because sometimes I feel like we can like think about ourselves. We're just living for the now. And you, if you got kids, or even if you don't have kids, you have a family, you're not really thinking about that legacy that you can leave in the event that you left, so you don't set up policy. So many people are dying, even if you look on, you know, at some of the celebrities or people who are deemed to have a certain level of finance, financial success, they're dying and never had a will set up. You know what I mean? So that's something that I really am grateful that you brought up um, and continue to bring up. I um, will hope that you, you're gonna be doing with your platform because it's something that we need to constantly hear. We gotta educate our people on. Um, speaking of educating our people, I do want to, um, before I let you go, I have two questions. One, can you tell, um, our viewers about like, you know, some of the things that you do on your platform and how they can get acclimated with you? Um, because you're giving out a lot of Jews on your platform. Like how can people tap in with you to learn, um, on the level that they can understand not using a whole bunch of technical terminologies. I've, I've watched some of your some of your reels and things of that nature that you that you have, you know, and it's very simple and it's understandable, you know, and it's clear. So tell people how they can tap in with you, hear more, learn more from you, get connected with you. Then my second follow up question: What is your goal, your 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 biggest goal as the real estate advisor that you are, or just in real estate in gen general? What is your end goal? What do you you what is the point where you get to that point you're going to be like, damn, I really made it. Although you're not going to stop working, but that point where you're like, you know what, I'm I'm really doing this on the level that I, I, I envision doing. So for the first answer, um, the crazy thing is I've been making a little bit of a shift uh, because of the market change. Um, so I haven't been on social media as much. Mm hmm and um, I used to pride myself on not watching the news. That's just something that I just didn't do because the majority of it, it's dramatic drama um, and negative energy. <laughs> yeah. so, um, but Instagram is becoming the new news. Mm -hmm. I could, like literally got on this morning and immediately a story about death was the first thing I saw. You know, like I don't get on social media before 10 a.m., but still that's still 10 a.m. is too early to hear about death so to say that i haven't been on social media as much but i'm still going to still try to do my best to engage 
Um, so if you do follow me on this platform, message me immediately because I am now moving more towards personal touch. I want to talk to you on the phone. I want you to come into the office. I want to send you Thanksgiving holiday. Let me say holiday cards. I don't want to offend nobody. Um, holiday cards. I want you to come to events that we're having um, for real estate or just for social gatherings. Uh, so the best bet is to message me directly so I can get your direct contact number. And it's literally me. I'm the one that run my page. So it's not going to be like this fake assistant person that's reaching out to you. It's going to be me. Uh, so follow me here. Um, message me, DM me, introduce yourself. I would love to talk to y'all directly to get to know you. Even if um, real estate isn't something that you can do right now, the conversation and the ability to get started now is very important because you never know what you need to do to get yourself in alignment with the perfect opportunity to purchase um, and to invest. <clears throat> but yes, the best thing is to send me a DM. Um, can I get my direct phone number out? Is if you want to, yeah, of course. Okay. Um, and if yeah. you want to follow me, just send me a text message. Don't, yeah, yeah, be polite now, but you can send me <laughs> a text message at the number linked below. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Cool, cool. I like to think that our viewers are very pleasant people. So please tap in. <laughs> Christian, if you're interested in getting some, you know, some tips that can put you on your journey to financial freedom in the real estate industry from just buying a house, selling a house, or just talking about some of those pointers that she made in regards to generational wealth. She's a abundance of knowledge. So please tap in with her. So yeah. Let's talk about your 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 goal. What is like your your biggest goal for you and in, in the industry that you're in? So again, the wealth ownership is everything to me. Um, my vision, and I somebody beats me to it as long as it gets done. But I want our people to own everything that we do. Mm. I want us to own the real estate buildings that we sell our own clothing lines out of. I want our people to own the grocery stores and the farm, mm -hmm. grow our food and our produce on. Mm -hmm. And I want us to own the cars that we drive. Like literally anything you can think that we're spending money on, I want us to own. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can, again, I can help you buy the storefront. Um, but I also want to be that resource that help you to figure that out. You know, I want you to, I want to be that resource that help us to get to a point. Like I can be the one that own all of these things, or we can figure out how to do it as a community, connecting you with the people who may have the funding. If you have the connections, like being able to create a community where we can feel freaking safe. <laughs> and we know, you know, everyone that we walk down the street, the houses that are on the block, we know the owners because it's one of us um and like just really taking back and creating our own city and our own space um through ownership that's 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 my overall real estate goals and and to have the community that we build be people that are full you know full of principles full of morals full of love full of life full of goodness full of positivity um and i feel like we can accomplish that when we do own because we're not worried about having to pay the landlord or being able to meet our bills because we are abundant in our space and understanding the power that god has instilled in us and that we are as people like we deserve to own the things that we do we deserve to live a life that feels natural and that feels good to who we really are mm -hmm. um, so my overall goal is to inspire the people and to be a part of the creation of owning the things that we do. Talk that talk, sister. That's what's up. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's what's up. So is we a little over time, so we're going to wrap this thing up because we know you're busy. You know, we want to you want to keep you on line too much tonight, long tonight. So Christian, before we let you go, uh, I want to give you the, the the platform to talk about, I know you mentioned like uh, real estate courses and events, any events, any workshops, anything that you have upcoming, please plug them right now so that people um, can know how to tap in with you and what's upcoming and what we can expect um, next, anything that you're at liberty of talking about right now. And then lastly, if you can close us out, with a few words of inspiration to wrap the conversation up. We greatly appreciate that. 
Um, so nothing is uh, nothing is in set in stone in regards to a date as of yet. But the events that we are looking to plan is bringing someone in to talk about real estate in the world of NFT and in in Web three um, and in the metaverse. So we're looking to have courses um, about being able to purchase land in the metaverse. Um, that's coming up in our office. We're looking to do. Um, it's a little bit different from because we're coming into the new year. A um, vision board party. It's a. It's a. It's a. a, a like a manifestation wheel. Um, idea where basically i don't want to break it out because i don't want anybody to like take it before i do it but the overall idea is to create a tool that you can use daily when you get up to figure out what you want to manifest that day um so we're looking to have that in december and again a lot of the things that we're doing now instead of using social media as much i'll still again i'll still be here for you to have access to me um but a lot of my time is the in-person time nowadays so i want to sit down and talk to you over tea <laughs> that um wealth tea <laughs> and i want to have those in-person conversations so again those are just two of the events that we've been talking about oh, another thing is we have someone that we um connected with that's in that's in a sense a liaison for the for mayor bowser um and she's a resource for all of the different programs all of the grants um that dc is allotting to people so we'll also be having her come in um every once in a while to have a conversation with entrepreneurs business owners minorities so that we can have access to what the mayor um has in play uh so those are the three things that we're working on is having um uh, consistent meetings with the mayor liaison one of her liaisons um the I guess the new year event and then also um, learning more about NFTs in a metaverse. And if that wonderful, make sure you keep us in the loop. And if we can do anything to support and also collaborate, you already know, you know, we're one phone call, one text, one email, but we, we, we recommend a phone call from you for sure. Uh, I'm um, sorry. So I do have a client um, who is elderly and he's selling his house and this is literally all the money he'll have to live off of so we are collecting like canned goods okay. um, and clothes it's the man he wears the size large um but those are some of the things that so again y'all have my direct number follow me on instagram if y'all have anything that you would like to donate to him as well he's moving into um, my mom's apartment actually she was blessed to have some real estate that she could um allow him to use in this time so he'll be moving in this weekend so Again, just message me if you have anything that you would like to donate for his transition um, into an apartment. But the great thing is at his house, so he could use the equity out of his house to live off and to sustain, sustain him. Um, so tap in if y'all can. Definitely. I'm going to um, connect with you offline because we, def we definitely have some resources for that. <laughs> uh, and then last, the words of inspiration, Christian, before we, before we wrap it up. Okay, let me see. Let me see what we're going to pull out. <laughs> um, live through your heart. Um, that may I always battle myself or is that's too feminine of a way to live life. But we need more love. Um, and I think that's the best way for us to be able to build genuinely. Um, invest in yourself and and I think the best way to do that is take time for you. You know, go within with everything that you do. Check in with God before you make financial decisions, before you um, decide to to do anything. Check in with God. You know, start your day with God. You, like, cut out music so early in the day, unless it's like vibrations where you can just spend your first moments in the day to meditate and to pray with God before you step into this world that will be pulling you into so many different directions. Um, and I think that will lead you in the right directions and start learning financial literacy. If you haven't already, if you have just dig deeper, cause there's always more layers to learn. Um, start your real estate portfolio Start your real estate portfolio. Start your real estate portfolio. <laughs> I 
I don't know how many times I can say that, but really get started. Even if it seems like something that you can't obtain right now, again, get started because there's a process that we take you through. One of the lenders that I love working with, he is as patient as I am. Like I have clients that I'm not planning to really help until next year because there's things that they have to get in alignment to really be able to afford comfortably and to be able to purchase in areas. But get started. Um, and the last thing, get some insurance. Life insurance um, in so many capacities. Um, I think Damo Vito is, um, has a company. So if y'all want to reach out, that's very important to our people. And it's also a wealth tool, mm -hmm. you know, being able to leave your family with something to grow with um, and not a debt, you know, being able to leave them in a good space. So um, those are the only things that I have. Meditate in the morning. Be with God first thing in the morning for as long as you need until you're grounded. Be true to yourself. Live from your heart. Live from love. And make sure you get your financial household in in order <laughs> wonderful well this has been such a dynamic conversation i just want to thank you again christian on the behalf of community connoisseurs i do see that there are a few people that came on late if you're just joining us this has been the moment of truth with christian marshall it's been a phenomenal conversation and this conversation will be uh posted on our page right after we log off so if you missed it you came on a bit late and you want to catch up and you want to watch the full episode, please visit our, uh, our page and you'll be able to view this full episode. But again, Christian, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are a wealth of positive energy and knowledge and we're super proud of you. You know that we have your back anytime you need some support, anytime you want to, you know, you have an idea that you may need some collaboration or partnership with um, on just let us know we have one phone call away christian anytime thank you so so much for joining us tonight on a moment of truth this has been amazing i appreciate you charlie sending so much love to you the family um and the rest of the connoisseurs and thank you again for the platform please you know protect your heart protect the vision and let's keep building absolutely you have a wonderful night christian thank you All right, so there you have it. That was Christian Marshall, y'all. Um, I want to thank y'all for tapping in tonight on the Moment of Truth. If you're not already following Christian, make sure y'all follow her page that is right there at the bottom, Christian, the realtor. She has a wealth of knowledge, phenomenal person, very reachable, approachable, and is willing to give the game up. So if you're interested in building your real estate portfolio, learning about generational wealth, just about financial literacy from someone who can give it to you in a simplified manner that is really passionate about what they do, please tap in with Christian, the realtor. Um, and also, if you're not following us, we are the Community Connoisseurs. Give us a follow at community underscore connoisseurs. We bring this podcast to you all every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. with individuals like Christian that are doing phenomenal things in their selected fields of endeavor. Um, so again, we want to thank you all for joining us tonight on The Moment of Truth. I have been your host, Charlie G. If you um, haven't visited our website, visit our website, communityconnoisseurs.org. Um, we are a 501c3 Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit, self-funded nonprofit organization. So if you have the generosity in your heart to check out our program and tap in, look at our page, do your research on what we do in the community. If you have the generosity in your heart to give us a donation, please hit that donate button that is on our website. Again, that website is communityconnoisseurs.org. We will greatly appreciate it. And your money will be going right back into the community to help fund and support all of our programming and things that we do in the areas of mentorship, youth de development, and minority entrepreneurship um, training for youth in the inner city. So again, I've been Charlie G tonight, your host, and we appreciate your love and your support. All of you that are on right now, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening, and we hope to see you next week. Peace and love.